Right line trains are ready to ride as high speed trips from Miami to Orlando are set to begin today after a series of delays. Yeah, Local 10's first Christina Vasquez will be at the inaugural ride this morning. She's joining us live in Miami with what we can expect. She's right there at the Bright Line. Hey, Christina. Good morning, and I have to tell you, just seconds ago, we had an opportunity to speak to the former head of the Greater Miami Visitor and Chambers Bureau, and the way he phrased it is that we're about to experience history, riding the rails of history. We'll get to that in a second, but first take a look at where we are. So this is the Miami station. Some of you in our community may be already familiar with this. If you've been taking the bright line to go up to some of the regional stops closer to our area, what's happening today is that inaugural trip all the way up to Orlando. And that has been the real focus for this company. You have to remember, this is the first privately run intercity rail in Florida since Henry Flagler. And of course, that's significant because Henry Flagler is really one of the fathers of South Florida in the sense that it was his rail system, his train system that first went from Jacksonville down to Key West with those hotels along the way really set the stage for Florida becoming an economic center for tourism and trade. And here what you are looking at is uh, a news conference that's set to begin in just a few minutes. We're expected to hear from the mayor of Miami-Dade County and from some company spokespeople. They're sort of kicking this off as we ride this inaugural train up through Orlando. So check back in with us in a little bit and we'll see what they had to say. Back to you. Christine, are you still there? I'm still here. I, oh. We had some <laughs> we had some sound that I was hoping and I'm trying to figure out whether or not if you all have it yet, but if you don't, that's fine. Back in April, you might remember that we went up to Orlando for the for the big station opening there. And one thing we discussed with you all and community members is when we talk about this idea of the first privately run intercity train since Henry Flagler, that is a big business model shift for rail in the United States. So beyond Florida, the entire rail industry is really looking at this project, what is going to be happening today to see if that is a direction that they want to go in. And what we learned from the president and CEO of Brightline is they really looked toward Europe and Asia, their high rail, uh, high speed rail services as a model. Let's listen in together on what you can expect on this train and what they're looking to do. Intercity passenger rail exists in every other country except ours. We're about 50 years behind Europe and Asia. It's about time we caught up. Complimentary Wi-Fi, outlets everywhere, high quality food and beverage. We knew that in order to get people out of their cars, it needed to be more than just about transportation. It needed to be about an experience. There are no other models like Brightline anywhere in the United States. This is kind of like their big debut. The business model has always hinged upon connecting South Florida to Central Florida. We are pioneering. Nobody's done this in over 100. The last person to do this in America was Henry Flagler. And back here live, when they, he speaks about really elevating the experience, here's a live look at uh, the bar here at the Miami station. The idea being almost like when you go to an airport, as opposed to a more commuter rail experience, for those of you from the Northeast may know uh, to be true. But the idea being like when you go to an airport, there's comfortable seating, there's Wi-Fi, there's drinks, there's food, there's beverages. You know, one thing that the president CEO has been very clear on is he knows for a lot of folks, especially in Florida, we're very reliant on their cars and they're trying to convince you to get out of that car, right, and take this train uh, to Orlando, whether it's a business conference or for your family. And they know some of that friction point, as it called, is trying to get you to, instead of going in the car, drive to a train station and then take the train. Well, they figure if they make it a really nice experience, both here at the station and then on your journey, that perhaps they'll convince you to leave that car behind. So we should see. Back to you. Well, you know, I love that you said that, Christina, because, you know, Eric has a family of six and, and many of us have families of four. And so we were looking at those prices, $79 each way for not the first class, for the, for the smart class, right? So when you talk about family, that really adds up as compared to a car full of people paying for a tank of gas. Where we're used to the European railway system, they make it really affordable there. So yes. I wonder when you had a chance to talk to them, and we love this technology and we love that we have a, we need a, a rail system because we do, we have too many people on the road. So we do want that as an alternative. Do they plan on bringing those prices down to kind of compete with a carload of people paying for a tank of gas? 
And I love how you brought up Europe because I know you've traveled there uh, quite quite a bit. And those who have are familiar, right, with not only the convenience of that, but like you said, the price point. So one thing that he, Patrick Audit, had said back in April is that they are trying to work out a package deal for a family of four. Everything you just said, they said it's an objection from right that one customer demographic that they've heard and they're trying to process and work through because they do want to incentivize and make it affordable for a family of four to ditch the car and go on the train. But they're also, again, one of their talking points from a business model perspective is trying to help you all say from their words, you know, okay, you have this frictionless experience, so to speak, when you leave your house, you pack all the kids in the car, right, and all the stuff and you leave, but then you do hit that friction once you hit, you guys know it, 95 traffic. The second that you're in traffic, all of the potty breaks along the way with those of us who kids knows, I can definitely slow down the process of getting to Orlando. It's all those little moments that they say that is also part of the experience and part of the price that you're paying to be on this is to mitigate against those and just get yep. to your destination faster. Good point. <laughs> or for those of us who have to plug in our EVs. We just left. We j you were just supposed to go to the bathroom. I, Christina knows yeah. what that's all about. <laughs> Last year. Yeah. Left the house. yeah, totally. All right, Christina Vasquez live for us this morning at that bright line. We've been waiting for a long time to get this rolling, so let's see. I how know. Things go. It was delayed for a while there, so I'm thankful it is here now. We'll check in with you later, Christina.